church that worships is limitless. And we're going to look at worship today as we go through our study. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, glad you guys are here, man. This is the way to ring in the new year, honestly, is to have uh, a time with God. Um, I'm not really big into New Year's resolutions, per se. You know, I don't smoke, so I don't need to quit that. I don't overeat. Okay, well, I'm American, so that's probably not, tr not true. Um, I never lie. Okay, maybe I do need to make some New Year's resolutions, but, but uh, the idea is that I'm not as big into New Year's resolutions as I am into spiritual resolutions. And I do think that January is a good time to say, hey, I'm going to kickstart something. I mean, if you're like me, you, you do want to start a diet and do something like that, and that's, that's fine. You, you may want to quit smoking, drinking, uh, whatever that is. Yeah, go ahead and do that. But put the spiritual resolution in front and watch what God can do in these other areas. Does that make sense? And so we're going to look at our core. And so if you have your sermon notes, you can pull that out. And our series for the next five weeks is to the core. And every January, we're going to do this in the history of ALC, is going to be that we're going to look at our core values. What does it mean for core? Now, you guys know, uh, you have ever been to the doctor and they say you need to work on your core? Or if you're ever looking at working out or you go to the gym, they say, well, you really need to work on your core. What that is, is that this, this area. And it's the core is getting your, you know, building that up. Now, I got mixed up. I went to the doctor, and I thought he said you need to build out your core. So I've been really working on <laughs> building my core out. Uh, but then he said, no, no, Bruce, you're mistaken. I, I said you need to strengthen your core. Oh, so that's the opposite. Okay, so I was building out. Now I need to build in and get it stronger. But the reason why, if you, if you ever ask your doctor or read up on it, is that if your core is working, your back's going to be better, but your shoulders are going to have less tension. You're actually going to be able to be stronger in other areas if you deal with your core. You begin with the inner, the core, the, the, the thing that everything's attached to, and then everything else will make more sense. That's true with our physical bodies. It's also true as a spiritual body. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Jesus Christ. And if our core is weak, then our ligaments are going to be weak. Other areas are going to be weak. So we need to be strengthened to the core right there in the middle of who we are. And so we're going to take these next five weeks and we're going to really look at our core values or what they, what the core means to us. Here's our graphic. We're going to show you up here on what our core values are. We have five of them and uh, here they are. Worship, connect, serve, Give and invite. So each week we're going to look at worship, connect, serve, give, and invite. Today is worship. And so let's begin this as we look at to the core. We're going to look at worship. And so if you can bow your heads with me and let's begin this time in prayer. Lord, uh, the challenge is great before us to grow as a person, but also to grow as a body, to be strengthened as a body of believers. And so Holy Spirit, would you do something even now? Minister to our hearts, uh, we pray. Would you uh, um, pour your spirit out? Would you move amongst us? And uh, as you fall upon us, we want to fall upon you, the great rock, uh, Jesus Christ. So we ask for blessing upon this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, if you have a Bible, turn to Romans chapter 12. Also, I have the verse in your sermon notes because I'm going to want you guys to do some uh, drawings and things like that. Well, not drawings. Not like you're going to do stick figures, but right on there. But and let me tell you something. God created us for a purpose on purpose. He created us for a purpose, and he created you on purpose. But that's also true of this church. I mean, if you really think about it, ALC was created by God for a purpose. Do you believe that? I mean, when I look at this church, and I just kind of go, what does God have in store for us? Because this is our beginning foundation. If we're growing this fast, if we're growing in a strong way, if we're becoming uh, this type of people, God is obviously in it. This doesn't happen by accident. And so we've been created on purpose for a purpose. And so there's a sense to where collectively we need to try to get what are we created for? What does God want to do? Well, I can tell you as we go through these weeks, we're here going to share a lot of that. But very obviously, God wants to transform and change the world around us. But to do that, he has to also transform and change us. You and me need to grow. So here's our purpose statement. You have it in your sermon notes, but it's going to be on the screen. It is Our purpose statement is this. Uh, the ALC's purpose statement is building authentic relationships with God and others. Building authentic relationships with God and others. Now, now look at how this works. 
building authentic relationships with God, well, we look at that as worship. You know, part of that is worship. As I build this, not a fake relationship, but an authentic, a true one, but also with each other. Well, believe it or not, that's also worship. So reason why worship is our very first of our core values is because everything springs out of that. And it actually applies to almost everything you do. And so go ahead and write this first point down. It's this, is worship at its core is all about loving God with everything that I am. You've heard me say this before because it's so important. If, if somebody asks me, what is worship? Or you ask Pastor Danny, we're not going to say it's singing. We're not going to say it's lifting hands. We're not going to say it's serving. We're not going to say that it's giving. But all of those are worship. So what it really is, is worship is giving, at its core, is giving my life up and giving all that I am and all that I have. Let's look at Romans 12, 1, 1 through 2. And I have it here, and I want you to circle some things, get a pen out. And this is called inductive Bible study. If you have your Bibles at home or you're doing it on your tablets, if you circle certain words or you highlight it, you write notes, these are good. That's inductive. That means you're getting involved in it. So I want you to practice for a New Year's. Is this. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies. So circle bodies. Could you do that? Because it didn't say offer your just your brain or just uh, your feet or, or your hands. It says offer your whole self as a living sacrifice, as holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We're going to break this down in point two also, but I want you to understand that you're giving your bodies as a living sacrifice. Not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice. Remember, the Jews of old actually sacrificed animals. God asked them to do that. Blood needed to be shed for the remission of our sins to, to fix that. Well, Christ answered that by his blood conquered all that. So now God says to us, no longer are you giving dead sacrifices. No longer is something else dying in your place. Jesus already did that. Now what you need to be is a living sacrifice. So give your whole self who, completely who you are to God. You are a living sacrifice. And that means the things that you do, the way you act, the words that you say, all these things put together matter. You want to love God? Then give him everything that you are. Now, I know I'm asking a lot, but honestly, it's not me asking, is it? It's God who's asking. And he says, give me everything, all of it, all of your pain. Give him your heart. Give him your sins. Give him your mind. Give him your feet. Give him your actions. All of it. He wants it all. This is called worship. That's what worship is all about, you know? Uh, worship means giving something of value. Okay, to God. Or actually, let's use the word sacrifice. Sacrifice. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's a sacrifice to come to church. It's a sacrifice to read the word. It's a sacrifice when you encourage somebody. Uh, when you say good things, you might say, wait, wait, that's not sacrifice. I, I want to read the word. I want to go to church. And I go, I get it. But worship, when you worship, it means you're giving up something to, to honor that. So if I'm lifting hands, I'm giving up comfortability to do that. If I'm giving, give, like my wife and I are generous givers. We like to give. We believe God when he says, I'm generous, you become generous and watch what happens. We believe him completely. So we're generous people by nature. But I'm going to tell you, it means we have to sacrifice something else in order to be able to give that. Does that make sense? We want to give. Our heart totally wants to give, but there's still sacrifice involved. If I lift my hands, I want to lift my hands, but it's still sacrifice. When I sing, I want to sing. But it's still a sacrifice. When I go to church on Sunday, I'm still sacrificing. So this is, this is a good thing. Good worship at its core is, is about loving God with everything that I am. Remember our purpose statement. Uh, building authentic relationships with God and others. This is important for every one of us. To love God, we need each other. And to love each other, we need God. They just go together. I worship better in community. You might sit down and go, well, I, I can worship on my own. I can, you know, be a lone ranger Christian. Really? You know? I mean, can you worship on your own up on a mountaintop? Absolutely. Can you worship in your car? Absolutely. Some of my best singing 
I mean, I should be on American Idol. It's in my car. Okay? So, no, we, we can worship on our own. But a Lone Ranger Christian, the person that kind of sits down and goes, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. What? You know? At the core of your Christianity needs to be church. Everywhere in Scripture, it tells us to gather together to worship together. Can I worship separately from the church? Absolutely. Am I called to completely be separated from the church? No way. We're better in community. And that worship together, you know, this whole Lone Ranger Christian thing is kind of a tough one. That's like saying, I'm a football player, but I don't have a team. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. You're a really good football player, aren't you? Yeah, what do you do, running down your living room? Like that, you know, and go, oh, I dodged everybody. I'm touched down again. I get touchdowns all the time. Yeah, because you don't have a team, you know. Or a tuba player without a band, right? That's really great. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, really not going to be drawing a crowd, you know. But you put that tuba player in a band, now the band is better because they got those bass notes, and the tuba player is better because he actually is, has a band. You know, and it's the same thing. You're fine as a believer uh, when you're outside, but if you're a believer that, that, that's ostracized yourself in the church, that's not good. And so uh, building authentic relationships with God and others get, get really need to come together. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, life groups, and we're going to talk more about them next week, but life groups are so important. Life groups are, are a big deal. And, and even some of you signed up last fall, but that doesn't mean you're going all the time. And I want to encourage you to do that. That life group needs you, and you need that life group. It's connecting. Do I get it that I have had a busy week, and I'm stressed out, and then all of a sudden Wednesday night at 6.30 and got to go to group, and there's some times that I'm like, ah, I'm tired. But I, I, I can't think of any time that I walked away at the end of my life group and said that was not valuable, and that was not good. I mean, it still feels better to be in that community and to grow. All I know is that my spiritual walk can deflate over time and begin to shrink, kind of like a balloon that, you know, yeah, it's filled with helium and it's floating, and then after time, when it's all by itself or whatever, you know, it just kind of starts to shrink down. And that's kind of how we are as believers if we're not connected and get refilled with the helium or the, the blessings of God's love with each other. So make a New Year's resolution or a spiritual resolution maybe. It's just that I'm going to be a person that's going to be committed to God through worship, worshiping Him building an authentic relationship with him, and worshiping him by loving other people. That's a big deal to me, and I hope it becomes a big deal to you. Point number two is this, is worship at its core. Go ahead and write this down. I know you might throw them away right afterwards, but it still helps us stay attentive. But worship at its core is all about loving God by living out my beliefs. So I not only need to give him all that I am, but I need to live out that which I believe. So let's go back to our, our Romans 12, and I'm going to have something else for you to underline. But therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. So this is called worship. This is your spiritual act of worship, is giving your whole body and doing all these things. But do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. And I don't know if you want to underline that or circle that. Do not uh, give in any longer to the pattern of this world. In other words, what that's saying is that I need to stop thinking like the world, but instead I need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. People ask me all the time, how do I know what God's will is for my life? How do I know what to do? I'm going to tell you, you're not going to figure that out by not being a part of a church. You're not going to figure that out by not being a person of worship. You're just not. It's a transformation of our minds. It's beginning to think more like what God thinks. It's beginning to move and become more like Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit, so there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's role is to convict us and to build into us. It's God in spirit, and he dwells within us. And so there's a sense to where, as a believer, you will naturally move towards being more like Jesus Christ. If there is no movement in that area, if there's no transformation, then I would say you might worry about whether or not you're saved or not. You know, there's just a truth to that. Because the Holy Spirit who is actively in us is moving us, transforming us, and becoming more like Jesus Christ. That's a good thing. You want to know how to figure out God's will? Become more and more closer to 
God. And then you will be able to hear his voice. You will be able to distinguish it from the voices of this world, the distractions of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, and, and this is a good thing. And this is worship. There is a transformational process that must happen in every single believer, period. All of us. Let's take Chris and Tina Ferry, okay, our missionaries. Okay, so here's some normal people just like you, okay, and, and, but they, they, they move away from being the normalcy of the world to, to becoming transformed by God. And so it wasn't like they just all of a sudden wake up and go, you know, the, you know they wake up out of bed and the spirit just goes, I'm going to Amazon. There was a transformational process that moved them closer and closer to what God's will was and is in their life. But now think about this. This is how it leads to worship is they go overseas to become these missionaries. That's sacrifice. I'm going to see, here to tell you, Chris and Tina Perry, every time they get on a plane to go over there to the Amazon again, that's worship. That is, that is saying, Lord, we're doing this for you. For their girls and, and their family. You know, I don't know if it sounds attractive to you to be in the middle of the jungles of the Amazon, but there's some scary things about that. And there's some great adventurous things about it too. But to give your whole life, that's worship. You know, when Chris and Tina, uh, you know, over time started to get to where they had to have a, a belief that they cared about people of different colors and different types of lifestyles. And, and, and that way they would leave the American dream to be able to go and get the God dream of doing overseas. Here, here's the thing. So when Chris and Tina first were going over there just to visit, <laughs> uh, they're going to mad at me for telling the story, but uh, they, they, uh, they go over and just to do a visitation, and the leader said, I need to warn you, there's a greeting that a lot of the chieftains do, so we're going to introduce you to some of these chieftains, and, and, and the Chris and Tina go, okay, what is it? They go, well, what happens is, is that they're going to look at you, and you need to lift up your shirt, and they stick their finger in your belly button, and then you are to stick your finger in their belly button, and of course, Chris and Tina are like... <laughs> Um, okay, that's not going to really happen. Sure enough, they get out the plane, they go right up, and the chieftain goes over, and he starts going like this. And so Chris literally lifts up his shirt, and the guy sticks his finger in his belly button. And then they, he has to do then, then the leader goes, <clears throat> and Chris goes, okay. <laughs> Sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to let somebody play with your belly button. That's what it is. And think about Chris and Tina. They meet all kinds of chieftains. They're constantly out there meeting this person, meeting that person. Chris's belly button is raw. <laughs> it's just people have been like that. Now, now so, so th that's all true. That's exactly what I, that is a greeting. I, re I go, it's still happening? He goes, oh, yeah, it still happens. That's, what they, that's how they greet. Is that a trip or what? And you need to learn to love these belly button touchers, you know, and you need to care for them. Now, when we go meet these guys, okay, so we have our luncheon right after the service, and they're going to be over there, don't. Okay, I, I'm sure they're sick of the jokes. Don't go, hey, Chris. <laughs> don't do that, okay? <clears throat> Just greet them normal, you know. They, they would appreciate a, a normal greeting or things like that. But that's what we're doing. Uh, all church luncheon, uh, after church. Uh, we have all that, it's all taken care of, it's all free and stuff like that. And make sure you greet them, American-wise, and do that. But the question is, um, you might be sitting there saying, is going, um, so are you saying that if I give my life to God, if I allow him to transform me, the next thing I know I'm going to be in the Amazon and people are going to be sticking their fingers in my belly button? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you need to be Chris and Tina Ferry. That's what God has challenged them to do, and that's what he's called them to do. But God, God has you to be transformed so you can be available for the jungles of Denver, Colorado, for the jungles of your, your uh, office complex, for the jungle uh, It's called your home, okay? A transformation of your life in order that you would become more like Jesus Christ is worship wherever God has you, and that's a big deal. So the question might be, all of us might ask, is that, and I would actually think we should all ask, is what does God want from me? Well, he doesn't want a lot of things from you. He really wants all of you. He wants every bit of you. Every dot, every freckle, he wants all that is you. You might think that's a lot to ask, but let me tell you this. You've been around you long enough. Who would really want you? God wants you, and he wants all of you. 
You've been around you uh, long enough to know that really what a value does God have for me? He, he, he thinks you're the most valuable person on the planet. He adores you. He loves you. And he wants all of you, every bit of that, so he can transform you to make you more like his son, Jesus Christ. There is not a single verse anywhere in the scripture. And, and I know you've heard this before, but I'm going to say it again because I want to get it right into your head. There is not one verse, not any place in scripture that says you can become a Christian and live your life any old way you want. Nothing says that. It never says become a Christian and go on and live your life the, 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 the cruddy the way that you used to. He says, give me your life in exchange for mine. I'm going to give you my life. And then you are to become more like my son, Jesus Christ. That is what it means to be a Christian. Nowhere does it say that you give 10% of your life or 50%. Even 99, he wants the whole kit and caboodle. Look at this other verse in Romans 6.13. I've got to calm down. Give yourselves completely to God. Now look at that. Give yourselves completely to God. Did he say give yourself half-heartedly to God? Huh? Did he say that? Okay, three people. Uh, hello? Did he say, give myself, give yourselves half heartedly to God? No. no, he says, give yourselves completely to God. And then, since you have been given new life. So, the reason why you're to give yourself completely to God is because you're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Jesus Christ died for you, and then you asked him in your life. Not so you can live your life the way you always wanted, always had in the past, but that you can always live now, live a life that God has ordained for you. So give yourselves completely to God since you have been given new life. And use your whole body, there it is again, not part of it, whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. This is scripture. This is good stuff. He wants your whole body. He wants every freckle. He wants every zit. He wants every hair on your head. Please, people. Give some hair from your head so he'll stop taking it from mine. Please, please. He wants it all. He wants every fat cell. He wants every thought cell. He wants the whole you. I don't have the best mind in the world, and I sometimes can't figure out how can he want my brain. You know, it's so deficient in things. But he does. He wants all of me, and he wants all of you. He's asking you to be a living vessel to use by him, for him, and this is worship. To live out what you believe and to live like you believe. Not just to live out the things that you believe in, but actually to live as if you're a believer. As if these things matter, if you care about this stuff. That's what's so important. You know, I, I get asked a lot. And um, I was just asked a couple months ago, but it was like, you know, what's this whole thing about lifting hands? It seems kind of strange and things like that when we're worshiping. And I thought I'd share something is that that, um, that isn't us asking that. That isn't Pastor Bruce or Pastor Danny asking you to lift hands, things like that. That is God. It's all throughout Scripture. But, you know, he asks us to kneel. He asks us to stand. He asks us to lift hands. He asks us to shout. He asks us to sing. He asks us to play loud music, literally in Scripture, play it loud, you know. He asks for these things. All of them, again, get us out of our comfort zone. It's uncomfortable to get on our knees before God. It's uncomfortable to lay prostrate, prostrate on the ground. And it's, it's uncomfortable to, to, to do these different things. You know, this, this is surrender. This is these other things. And, and, I, and I look at it and I go, man, I'm to be a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to him. That's with my body. That's with my kneecaps. That's with my shoulders, that's with my arms, that's with my voice, that's with my actions. See, God doesn't want us just to be pew sitters and sitting around all day like that. I mean, listen, if you're a pew sitter and that's all you do, and you're a good Christian when you're sitting in that pew, but when you go outside, you have nothing going on, nothing spiritual. If all you do is sit in a pew, then pew is probably a good word to describe your Christian faith. Now, I know some of you might be sitting there going, wait, he just called me stinky. He just called, no, I, I didn't call you personally stinky. I said, if your Christianity is only in a pew and it's never outside, it's never in any other way, then pew probably describes it. That's up to you if you decide that that defines your spirituality. Now, I know I'm hitting hard, but this is a big deal. It begins with worship. Worship is such a great and powerful thing. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 5.15. He died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who 
died for them and was raised again. I am called to no longer live for myself. I am called to no longer live for myself. I am called to live for he who died for me, took my place. It cost Jesus to die for you. And I'm making no bones about it, but it cost you to live for him. This is called sacrifice. This is worship. Worship is setting aside the distractions of this world and giving my oaths, my life, my values, my heart, my promises, my love, my generosity, my service to my God. That's worship. He died for me. I live for him. One last thing to write down is notice this. Jesus deserves my life. I did not deserve his. I did not deserve God dying for me to take my sins. But I am now free. And I am free indeed. But I, I did not deserve that. And so I only know this, that I now am called to live for him. Every bit of me. And this is my worship. Our purpose statement, building authentic relationships with God and with others. Together. That is worship. I grow better when I'm in community. And the community grows better when I'm in worship with God. And these go together. My worship becomes better. My love for others becomes better. These go and work in tandem. So my challenge for you in 2019, since it's the first Sunday of 2019, can't even believe I'm saying that, my challenge for you is to grow spiritually, to take that step. You know, last week we started this, and if you missed that week, as we looked at where's God in the new year, I, I'd let, you always can go online. You can always, uh, if you miss any sermon, you can go online there. But for right now, for the very first Sunday, we're going to have communion in a little bit. But I want to first challenge you to commit yourself to God. And I realize there's people that are newer here today. Uh, maybe you're sitting around and you're going, man, my past, uh, I had some semblance of Christianity, but I haven't been to church in years. Well, you need to rededicate your life. That's my challenge. Start this year out right. And say, I'm giving my life to God. Maybe you've never asked Christ in your life, and you need to do that today. Remember, all you are is receiving that which he's already given. It's like a gift. He says, here's a gift, but you need to open it. And that's what it means when you ask Christ in your life. We call it the ABCs. Uh, a means admit that I'm a sinner, that I need, need salvation. B is that I believe. And C is I commit. See, there's a role that you have, and that's to commit to him. And so I want to give everybody an opportunity to, to do that today. Um, so let's begin this time in prayer, and then I'll lead for a time of, of salvation so that you can live that life. But Lord God, we come together as a church, and we, <clears throat> we, we ask for your healing power to fall freshly on us today. Christmas time is filled with so much good stuff, but it also can come with its tragics and, and disruptions. And now as we get ready for this new year, get back to work and back to life, as kids going back to school, Lord, we offer ourselves to you. We want to make a spiritual resolution to grow in worship, to lift up holy hands, to lift up our voices, our hearts to you, that we would daily be servants of you, that you would be pleased with our capabilities and our desires. Continue to transform us, oh God. I pray for this congregation. I pray that we'd be a transformed congregation. We would be known as people that are different. And so, Lord, we pray, oh holy God, make us different. Renew us spiritually. We invite you to take over. It's not much, but it's what we have to offer. Now, our heads are bowed and your eyes are still closed. Some of you are going, I need to take that first step. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life. You, you, you've had years, you, you haven't been walking with them at all. But today you realize you need to do that. Whether it's your first time or, or it's not been since you were a child or whatever, I'd love to offer you an opportunity to receive Jesus. I'm not going to ask you to come out of your seat or anything, but I am going to ask you to, to do something, to lift a hand, to take an action, to sacrifice 
whatever those feelings are in you. And lift your hand, and, uh, and I want to pray for you right there in your seat, pray with you and lead you to salvation. So, I, so go ahead and lift your hand. I already see a couple of people already lifting them up, saying, today I want to receive Jesus. Come on, don't be shy. All over the place. Wow, good for you guys. Come on, okay. Go ahead and put those down. And then pray this prayer with me in your heart. Jesus, come into my life. I dedicate myself to you. I commit myself to you. Because you first committed to me. You gave your life for me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Taking on my sin. I now give my life to you. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 There's like 10 or 12 people. That's the way to start the new year. It's the way to start it.